You're listening to the Swap Society Podcast, and I'm your host, Nicole Robertson. I interview thought leaders and change makers who are working to create a more sustainable and equitable world through fashion, art, and activism. Join us for a dose of climate optimism as we envision a brighter future. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Swap Society Podcast. Today, I'm talking with Patrick Duffy, the founder of Global Fashion Exchange, Also known as GFX, Patrick and his team create content-rich experiences that are designed to catalyze change. Hi, Patrick. Hi, Nicole. (laughs) How's my favorite swapper doing? My swap did. I know, my swap brother. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's so great to see you and be here. Thank you. It's such an honor. I know. Thanks for being here. I know we haven't seen you and each other in person in so long, but hopefully that will change. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of that, I know you're usually kind of traveling around the world. Where are you today? Well, I'm actually in my favorite place ever. I'm at my mother's house in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and we're hunkered in together uh, trying to get through the last uh, remnants of cold weather to spring. So I'm I'm here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Minneapolis, Minneapolis, Minnesota. That's where I am. (laughs) Amazing. Is that where you're from? Did you grow up there? I did, yeah. Born and raised in Minnesota. Um, and so that's why when I get excited, you can sense the accent sometimes. So I'll, I'll, try to, I'll give you a little accent every once in a while. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> so tell us, I mean, obviously you and I know each other, but for everyone who's listening, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into swapping. Oh, gosh, Nicole, it is such a crazy story. Um, so I'll go back way, way, way back to, mm, to around 2010, I guess. So I was living in New York City and I was working in hospitality. Uh, I was working a lot in nightlife and hotels and events. I had a production company doing PR and, um, I owned a restaurant and the director of, uh, some hotels. And I was always like really involved in, you know, fashion and, uh, this kind of, super fast lifestyle that goes along with fashion and the glamour that was all a part of it. And, um, which by proxy made me a super consumer. So I was really super into like the labels and the brands and like everything that went along with it. And that was also a part of my business. Uh, and, um, what ended up happening was I became really attuned to, uh, what was happening in the fashion industry by pulling back the curtain. And I started to look and really understand um, the depth of the atrocities that were happening um, around people and to the planet. Um, and once I became, you know, really present to that, then I had a, a basically an existential crisis, <laughs> one of many, and I have about 10 a day. Um, <laughs> so that first crisis, have you ever had one? I'm sure. <laughs> oh, God, like every day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I actually really believe in them. I feel like if you don't have them, then you're not really living. Um <laughs> Anyways, so let's pray that people have them on a daily. Anyway, so I had one and um, I started to, it became this kind of moment where I was like questioning everything. What am I doing? What's going on here? What's the fashion industry doing? Why are we all, you know, compelled to consume like this? And essentially then what I did was a a major pendulum shift and, um, and switched my life over into what we're doing now, which is the Global Fashion Exchange. And it all started with something that both you and I really love, which is discovering a clothing swap for the first time. So I was invited to Copenhagen um, as a journalist because there was a, a fashion week that was happening there called Copenhagen Fashion Week. And I was invited as a journalist to write about what's happening in um, the fashion industry, what's happening in Copenhagen. And at that time, they were really the first ones to, to heavily focus on sustainability in um, on the supply chain and the, on the social side. And it was the first time I was ever really seeing this to this level. And um, when I got invited, it was really exciting because I thought, wow, there's a lot of people that are really, you know, interested and excited in this kind of new way forward through fashion, but it's still very early days. Then I was walking through Copenhagen City Hall Square one day, and just like that, I saw something called the Fashion Exchange, which was just basically a tent that said Fashion Exchange on it in the middle of um, the Copenhagen City Hall Square. And I had an aha moment, and I thought, oh my gosh, 
I, I saw the people that were inside of uh, inside swapping and participating. I felt the vibes. I felt the happiness. I felt the community. And I start, and I really started to then understand like why this is such a good thing because it brings people together, it extends the life of clothing. It is such a simple act that is inclusive and everybody can participate. And then that really resonated towards for me. So then what I realized is that I can take all of this tool, all of the tools that I had in my toolkit from my early days in New York City and start to apply those to basically clothing swaps and turn this into something that can be big and brought around the world and education uh, for education purposes. And so thus began the Global Fashion Exchange. And uh, that's where that's where it all began. And it was, there was no turning back. I just, I saw it, I felt it, and I thought this is what I really want to do, uh, you know, for the rest of my life. And who, know, who knows if that will be the case for the rest of my life, but that's what I, I thought at the time. And, um, and by the grace of whoever, whatever, whatever, whatever <laughs> we're praying to, <laughs> it's brought me so much um, joy and knowledge and education and bringing people together and meeting people like you. You're one of the fir- first swap people that I, act- swap community members that I actually met way back in the day, finding you through <laughs> Instagram. I remember like hashtagging and like connecting with you way <laughs> back in the day. And was like, oh my God, there's another swap person. And you know what? Here we are. Here we are. I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting because for me, you know, for those listening who may not know, I came from the beauty industry and I actually launched one of the first beauty subscription boxes, um, you know, worked for one of the first beauty e-commerce brands. Uh, you know, so my, so much of my background was online. So similar to you, you were in events, right? And promotion and you created this whole kind of swap event concept. And then on my side, you know, I came to swapping through a little local swap group in my neighborhood and thought, Oh, well, what if this was online? What if, what if this were an online membership where people could do it from a, broader area than just my local neighborhood. So it's funny yeah. how we both found swapping in different ways, but then also took our backgrounds and applied it kind of into this concept. Uh, yeah. So it's it's cool. It's so exciting to see how much GFX has grown and evolved. And it seems like you were going kind of above and beyond even the original concept of just having swap events. So, you know, please tell us, you know, what, what has been the evolution of GFX and, and what is your focus right now? Yeah, it's such a, such a good question. Interesting question, because um, I'm going to be quite honest and like super vulnerable. There was really no direction. It was like, how the hell am I going to make this work? <laughs> you know, I think, I think being, I think you could kind of consider us both social entrepreneurs in a way, because what we're trying to do is create something that everybody can participate in. That's good for people and planet, but it also has to be a business. We also have to sustain ourselves. Right. So that was always the challenge with me and, um, and trying to figure out how am I going to be this like felt, what felt like such a lonely salmon swimming upstream with nobody else in these big corporate companies that want to swap. But I really believed in it. And I was like, well, let's, let's reinvent the wheel here and let's look at, you know, different ways that we can turn, um, you know, turn a profit in the business. So we don't necessarily have to put all of the focus and all of the um, attention focus on, you know, um, making swaps profitable because that for me that was the challenge to wrap my really wrap my head around so i went back into my toolkit and i thought well what are the different ways that we can you know that we can generate revenue and still bring good to people um which was through education and through media so one of the ways that we started to do that was we started to create you know big events which were um, thought leadership events and summit events and partnering with different thought leaderships and different summit events and working really deeply with the educators and the media companies and the, and the people that are making those things happen to create these different types of partnerships that so we can help extend the really incredible content and the real incredible information or tools that are sometimes not accessible to everybody to a larger audience. And why that was so great for me was because it allowed me to, again, like I said, really flex the flex the muscles from my previous life into this and start to again connect people um, to really great causes connect you know connecting Peru to Europe connecting Southeast Asia to Latin America connecting you know Miami to New York or, or whatever or people to the world and also um, creating you know inspiration and um, and ways that people can get get involved every step of the way and so I didn't. I never really anticipated that then I would also become kind of a public 
speaker or public figure in the space. But I guess by proxy, when you start to really deeply understand all of these things that are happening and you have such a, uh, a, a when your vocabulary becomes um, quite expansive and you're starting to really understand things about the, the challenges in supply chain and the challenges very deep in the supply chain or the challenges with people or the challenges with factories or the challenges with material innovation and scaling and all those kinds of things. Those are all really valuable things that are all a part of this incredible industry that I really know and I really love. So being able to then take all of those things, like all of the, all of that information and not only being able to kind of push those things out publicly to people for, you know, people like me to understand and, and listen to in wonderful podcasts like this, for instance, what about being able to consult with companies who also have questions that they want to go deeper and they actually want to catalyze solutions with their own, within their own companies, within their municipalities, within their, their brands. So then what we decided to do was create a consultancy and the consultancy was really wonderful because it allowed us to really deeply work with and deeply engage with, like I said, companies, municipalities, brands, countries, trade commissions, because everybody wants to get there. We all want to go there. We just don't know how to go there. So what I realized that the, the value that I had with GFX was being able to catalyze and bring all of these people together with all different types of solutions, which are kind of amazing. These solutions are amazing when they're all separate, but imagine what could happen when we put them all together. So that's when another kind of aha moment came to me when I thought, okay, well, you have such incredible relationships with such incredible people that have many different solutions that are working in many different ways. How can we bring all these things um, together? And then, of course, you know, work to catalyze the um, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which I am personally really passionate about and that our company, Global Fashion Exchange, is aligned with. So that's kind of how we started to um, kind of get to where we are now. And, I, you know, I guess we're we're responsive, you know, which, which I think is really lucky because some, so many times when companies put out like their plans or put out, you know, the next six months, the next 12 months, the next three, three years, five years, all of that becomes irrelevant when a, when a pandemic hits, all of that becomes irrelevant when a war comes, all of that becomes irrelevant when you get sick, all of that becomes irrelevant when an economy collapses. So it's like, what's really interesting and what I'm super grateful for is that we get to not only future think through the, in, the things that are happening that we want to happen in the future, but we also get to create positive change by being responsive to what's happening now. And that is so, so joyful for me because I really feel like that we can make a positive impact, um, you know, in our current state in our current position that we're in and then you know how we all move together in the future absolutely well and it's interesting too because you know the things that we need to do you know we you and i and and you know other people like us we've been thinking about you know sustainability and you know changing consumption habits and you know shifting culture uh towards you know more kind of healthy and prosperous future for people and planet but um, I think it's it's interesting to see how, you know, when there, as you mentioned, when there is a global pandemic, when there is, you know, war or, you know, economic trouble, you know, the types of solutions that we're focusing on are so relevant, right? And I think it just highlights even more how much the world needs these alternatives, you know, instead of kind of just pushing along with the status quo. Absolutely. Absolutely. I totally agree, Nicole. And I think what's so interesting about that is swapping more than anything, I think, is so relevant and accessible and applicable right now. And it's kind of like, you know, it's so exciting that there's, you know, since since you and I have met, I think it was back in 2014 that we originally had met. We've seen the we've I've seen you and I've seen such an unbelievable expansion of this idea, which kind of is a little bit anti-capitalistic, I guess you could say on the surface, but when you think about it, really, it can actually really support a healthy ca capitalistic, um, you know, uh, vision. And what's so amazing about it is it gives, like you said, gives people options and it gives them many options to be able to still have a quality of life, still be able to participate in, uh, in, you know, with style 
in the fashion in the fashion industry and through their closets. But even outside of that, the idea of just bartering and trading and, and shifting and sharing is is really positive. And I think it gives people a really um, a really positive uh, uh, set of um, tools that they can you know still have a super high quality life and you know not have to um, not have to struggle in, in some ways. You know that's at least what I believe. Yeah, absolutely. And and you mentioned earlier, you did mention the SDGs. So I just want to touch on that for a moment as well. I love that mm -hmm. GFX focuses on um, the, they're the United Nations Sustainability <laughs> Development Goals. Um, they're also referred to as the Global Goals. And they're a set of 17 goals that are designed to be a blueprint to achieve a better and more sustainable future for all people in the world by 2030. Um, uh, what uh, what are the SDGs that you focus on and, and how does your work intersect with the Global Goals Framework? Yeah, it's a really good question. And I'm so I'm so happy that these were developed because it's kind of like, you know, I'm not sure if you know what gar animals are. I'm old. Do you remember what gar animals are? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like the gar animals were doing good, which is like the best thing on the planet. <laughs> So good that we can like color code our doing good and like make it easy. So when I first discovered this, I was like, this is genius. It's amazing. Um, but the thing was, you know, with all 17 goals, each one of them is super relevant. And like, I remember in the very beginning having like so much agita trying to figure out which one I was going to be, you know, going towards. But the fact of the matter is, is I think all of them are related. So if you're, so the ones that we really do, I really do focus on, which is 12, which is within, uh, responsible consumption and production patterns. Goal number 13, which is climate action, and goal number 14, which is life below water, those things don't necessarily negate the other ones that we're also really passionate about, which is, you know, number five, which is gender equality, six, clean water, seven, affordable energy, or four, education, for instance. Those are all important things. And I kind of do believe that all of them are woven, each one is kind of woven into the other in some way, shape, or form, because as an example, we need quality education for in order to get us to responsible consumption and production, 12. So they all kind of do work together. You know what I mean? Um, but uh, to answer your question, the ones that we really, the ones that I'm personally passionate about, of course, the swapping uh, is responsible production and consumption. And why that's so interesting, why I, I think that's so important is because I, I think that we're so pulled, we've been so pulled away from what that actually even means in the and the fashion industry has done such a great job into teaching us that we can be irresponsible with our consumption patterns. And so just starting there through that lens and really starting to understand how we can be more responsible, for instance, through acting like swapping, sharing, renting, reusing, upcycling, repairing, all those really wonderful things that go together are seemingly, you know, small acts like to swap and share or to repair something seems like something small, but actually it's a really big deal when you think about if I do this in my own life and then Nicole and I are doing this together and then Nicole's family and myself and then Nicole's community and Patrick's community and then all of these communities all over the world. And that's a, that's a really amazing thing. So I feel like one one really great act can catalyze change in all with all of these different goals. Um, Life Below Water, number 14, is another one I'm personally passionate about. I'm wearing the Together Band um, Life Below Water bracelet here. I'm a Together Band ambassador. Um, and what life, life Below Water is really important to me because, again, all of these things work together. And, you know, I've been loving all of the information and education I've been seeing come across the Swap Society platform about how our fashion impacts the planet. And what's really interesting is I think now in the past, five years, people have really started to understand what fashion's impact on the planet is, and not just life above water, but life below water. And I think these really interesting statistics that come out, for instance, about microplastic pollution, plastic pollution, um, first are just this tip of the iceberg. But then when we really start to understand why we need the ocean to be healthy and why that is so important, that, again, also affects the rest of everything that we do in our daily lives. So, um, which I think number goal number thirteen, climate action, fits into that as well, um, on a general, on a, in a general way. But so, um, I'm particularly passionate about the ocean because I love the ocean. I love to about the cancer. I'm always in the water. I'm always in my. If I could live in my bathing suit, I would live in my bathing suit. That's what I. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> Amazing. Well, and you yeah. know, you mentioned just how yeah, like every little action that we take is so impactful. And there's a stat that always really blows me away. 
that just by swapping a shirt with a friend, uh, you save enough drinking water for a person to drink for two and a half years. And it's like, yeah, I know, right? Cheers. I mean, mm-hmm. that's mind blowing, right? And so I think that, you know, part of our work is, yes, creating these opportunities for people to kind of make those exchanges and have those swaps, but also, you know, educate and inspire and inform and let people know that, yeah, all of these little steps really do add up, especially the more we do it. Um, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) It's kind of like, it's kind of like, you know, again, I was a kid from the eighties and I always just have this vision of like the days of our lives, um, sand hourglass. (laughs) in front of me and so it's like imagine with days one grain of of lives. days of our lives swaps of our lives <laughs> oh my God, yes, these are the swaps of our lives <laughs> these are the swaps of our lives but it's like one grain of sand you think mm, not going to make a big deal but then when you start to really see the grain of sand turn into a beach or turn into a desert you're like oh gosh each grain of sand is super important so that's kind of how i think about it too yeah i love it so <laughs> what is what is global fashion exchange's focus for this year, what can we expect to see in the coming months? Gosh, we're doing, you know, it's been, it's been a, a really interesting climb out of COVID um, because of course we were doing a lot of physical events, which kind of, you know, had, we had to put the kibosh on, so to speak. But now um, since things are kind of starting to loosen up a little bit and free up a little bit, we're kind of slowly creeping our way back out there. Um, which is really exciting. Of course, being extremely conscious and, and careful because in, in every place it's different and we want safe swaps to happen. Um, but we're going back out there and we've got some really great um, events and really great things that are happening. I guess um, one thing I'm really one thing I'm really particularly excited about is we recently did a partnership um, that happened in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, which was really interesting. We were brought in by um, the, he's called Barack Kakmak and he's the CEO of the Fashion Commission in Saudi and, and Princess Nora bint al Saud. And it was, a, it was a really fascinating and interesting cultural shift and program that we were commissioned to do last year where we brought swapping, sharing and circular economy and sustainable fashion to the country for the very first time in a way where consumers, people, I hate that word consumers, where people could actually engage and swap. And that to me was really fascinating because um, not only did we execute a really fun and fantastic and fabulous event, which I always love, I love the glamour of all that, but what we did was we sparked change. And now people who have never, ever once considering sharing because it just wasn't a part of their culture. And as a matter of fact, selling secondhand or sharing items might be looked at as a bit naff, so to speak, have now kind of converted how they've been thinking about things. And actually we've kind of created a, a swap sensation. So we've been invited back and we'll be doing that again this year, which I'm really excited about and creating some education and some really cool programs that go along with it, which also are about, you know, mending and upcycling and recycling and artisans and all that really cool stuff. So we're excited about that. And we're going to start to do um, some, a lot of work back in, in uh, Europe. Um, we're going to be doing some great stuff in Athens, Greece, which I'm really excited about. So partnering up with the city and partnering up with a couple of hotels there to think about how we can engage in that way and, you know, really bring people into the, from the hospitality sector uh, into, you know, this kind of swapping, sh- sh- sharing and circular, I kind of got a lot of S's and C's, <laughs> swapping, sharing and circular economy. And so that's good. And, and continuing to sp- support people that we know and have worked with all over the world and the many different places that we work with the many different partners, for instance, like yourself, I know you've got some swap events coming up, so we're here to help support and push that out. Um, we're doing some, you know, we're setting up a monthly swap shop in London, partnering with a monthly swap shop um, community in Toronto, and continuing to work with our many swap friends and swap ambassadors like yourself all over the world to just support as much as we possibly can. Yeah, you know, it's a uh the pandemic really definitely kind of put the kibosh, so to speak, <laughs> on, <laughs> on in-person events. I mean, we were we were fortunate that we were, you know, our focus is that we're an online platform, but we've always really loved doing events and collaborating yeah. with you and Fashion Revolution and Remake and, um, you know, bringing community together and being able to see people's faces. <laughs> Uh, Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we definitely hope, you know, now that things here in Los Angeles are opening up again, we definitely hope to, you know, be able to do some safe events soon, which is Let's do it. Yeah, I know. I hope so. I want to get to LA and see you. (laughs) Visit us. 
It's sunny here. You could live at the beach in your bathing suit. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get a swimsuit on Swap Society <laughs> and live at the beach. Live at the beach. Live That's at what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. You know what's funny and or sad? I mean, this is just like a personal confession, but I live yeah. <laughs> really, really close to the beach. Oh, I thanks for the invite, Nicole. But <laughs> I don't. <laughs> You're always welcome. But. That's not my sad story. My sad story is that I almost never go to the beach and I live really, really close to it. So, you know, just caught up in life, you know, work and kids and whatever. Yeah, and you have a go, lot going on. We go a lot on the weekends. Uh, but yeah, during the week, <coughs> ever see the ocean during the week. I mean, that would yeah. be like a rare, a rare thing. But well, um, <laughs> understandable, you're an amazing entrepreneur with a family and you're kicking all of these cylinders on super high. So the beach, is, the beach will be lucky to have you. Yeah, the beach the will beach, be lucky I to love have that you. it's there. I love when I make it over there. <laughs> so, okay. So Patrick, I love a good fashion love story. Tell oh, me, God. tell me, what's your favorite piece in your closet and why? Oh my gosh. You know, this is... I mean, I, as I told you a little bit before, I'm I'm kind of I've turned into a fashion minimalist with a maximalist sensibility. So I used to own some really beautiful. I'll start with what I used to own real quick. I used to own some really beautiful, beautiful pieces, and I have I actually held on to one piece and um, that I really, really love, um, which is something that like it's in storage. I don't wear it on a daily basis because I just it's kind of crazy. So when I was back in my super consumption days, I um, was invited to a Celeron sample sale. Probably, I think, I can't remember exactly what the year was, but John, um, uh, Tom Ford was designing for Celeron at the time. And this was his second collection that he'd ever done. And um, there was a coat that um, I believe it was uh, Carolyn Murphy or Amber Valletta. I can't remember who it was, but there was a coat that they were wearing on the runway, which was this unbelievable coat that was just only made for the runway. And I remember seeing it back at that time thinking, oh my God, if I could just have that coat. Well, I got invited to the sample sale and my past life, Patrick, was of course elbowing everyone <laughs> my way through it. <laughs> like there was a sea of Mombasa bags going everywhere and like cellar everywhere. And I was like, oh. and all of a sudden they get to this thing and it was like, oh, there's the coat from the runway show. Oh my God. And I remember I picked it up for like, I think it was $125 at that time, which was insane because I think they valued the coat at $25,000. And so I just remember grabbing the coat and it didn't really, fit. I mean, it was this mass, it's a massive, um, it is leather. I hate to say it because I'm not really somebody that buys a lot of leather because uh, I'm, I'm a vegan and I believe in animal rights and all that kind of stuff. But at the time, this is this, it was the most amazing thing for me. And so anyways, I, it's this beautiful leather um, coat that is just massive and huge and heavy and gorgeous. And it is um, something that I think will, I'll always have and cherish in a part of, as a part of my life because it, it reminds me so much of like that part of my life that I used to participate in. But it still is such an unbelievable and gorgeous piece that I never, ever want to let it go. So that's from my history. From, from now... From now, I'm. It's really strange because I tend to I tend to wear things that are like gifts, or I tend to wear things that I get at swap. So, as an example, like you can see if you're in the video, these pants I got, uh -huh. um, and this shirt I got. So this this sweater I got is hilarious. I don't know if you can see all the holes in it. My mother gave this sweater to me. There's so many holes in this thing. She gave this sweater to me like six years ago and I wear it everywhere. And there's so, so many holes. I haven't figured out, I haven't done the darning of the holes yet or whatever. I haven't fixed it yet, but I kind of love that. <laughs> so I wear it because my mom gave it to me. And then these pants, I was just at a swap in Prague with our partners there at Swap Prague. And um, I remember I was like, I need a pair of wool pants for the winter because it's going to be really, really um, cold. So I had like a pair of kind of uh, denim that I liked. But I just thought, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to give these to the swap. And um, I wasn't wearing them. So I wasn't walking around with any pants on. But I gave my dad, <laughs> I gave my dad <laughs> which has happened. That's happened. I give it. I gave my <laughs> when there's a, something that I really love. I gave my pants. And then lo and behold, I found these and they they've actually they're my new every day. I love them. So it's kind of like it's these things. That's what I, I the love stories are the things that I find 
that I just, they may not fit super perfectly, but you wear, you wear a belt and you cinch them up and you know what? People are like, oh my God, I love that you cinched your pants or the holes in your sweater. You know, people are like, are they supposed to be there? And yes, they're supposed to be there. So but that's my love story. I love it. You know, I also am notorious for wearing holy sweaters, either holes that <laughs> I've put in them or, you know, we will accept some things, you know, that might have a minor imperfection here at the at Swap Society. But, you know, if they have more than one or two tiny little holes, it kind of goes in the, you know, the reject bin, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and we pass all of that on and, you know, we're not throwing it in the trash, but I am always digging out the, the holy cashmere sweaters. <laughs> oh, my God. That's, that's what this is, the holy cashmere. The holy cashmere. Yeah. I actually had one on earlier um, that I almost wore for this, but then I changed it at the last second. But it was, it, but I was like, oh, we didn't accept this. Oh, it's cashmere. I'll wear it. You know, it's not even my size. I don't even care. It's a holy cashmere yeah. sweater. I'll throw it on. <laughs> like live for sure. in those things. <laughs> I yes, was oh my. Mending. We need to mend them. But, but even if you don't, who cares if there's a little hole in your sweater? Right. I mean, I guess it's just, it, I guess it depends on what you're comfortable with. I will say hilariously, because I was just in Greece, like, uh, last week or the week before. And of course, you know, I don't really have, I only travel with like 10 items of clothing, you know, undies included. And I'm such a, I'm a fitness person. And so um, I didn't realize there was a cold spell in Greece and, and they don't have air conditioning. So I was going to the gym and I was wearing this Cadbury sweater as I was working out. And people were like, what's that guy doing? <laughs> I was like, oh, let's see. It works. Yeah, you can it. I love it. <laughs> yep. There you go. There you go. So, Patrick, what's inspiring you right now? Oh, goodness. Okay, well, right now, as in, like, actually right now, 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 I have been glued to the TV watching uh, Katanji Brown Jackson hearing, mm. and I'm so inspired by that woman. I'm so inspired by it. I'm really saddened by the process that she's had to go through, but I'm because of these, you know, wankers that have been giving us such a hard time. We're not going to go there. Yeah, I'm not yeah, going to yeah. go there, but I'm so inspired and I'm so in excited and I'm so engaged by this incredible woman who is and it's, and it's not just necessarily her, but it's what she represents for the rest of the world and the rest of the rest of us. Um, and I just, it, watching it, I was in tears so many times, not be, not just because of the the vulnerability and the honesty in which that she communicated her story, but the praise and the um, the praise and the recognition that she was receiving from her peers, which was just so unbelievably moving. And so I'm I'm really inspired because I think, um, especially the world, the world, and and and, and also the United States, we need her. We desperately need her. We desperately need more people, more women like her. And and we need to learn from and we need to learn from this experience. So I've just been sitting here in Minneapolis, glued to the TV with my mom and like we've been in tears, like watching this whole process. So it's just really yeah. So I'm really inspired by that. And um I'm also very inspired by uh how people have come together around this war in Ukraine. Um and it was it's been a bit challenging because for me, because it's like, how do we actually make an impact and make a difference? It's something that is so sometimes outside the realm of, of, of even how to, 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 to do anything. And what's been so amazing and inspiring and exciting is to see how people have mobilized in the fashion industry to support um, the people in uh, Ukraine and the people whose lives have been affected by everything that's happening in Ukraine. Um, and so what's been amazing about that is it shows me that we can make a difference. We can come together. We can make a change and we can do it quickly. And it's so unfortunate that it's happening in and around this. And I'm just praying every single day that it's just over, over, over and as fast and quickly as possible. But what's so inspiring about it is that there are people out there that care. And there's many, 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 many people out there that care. So that's really inspiring to me to see because... I think sometimes we get lost, at least I do. I'm a very sensitive person and I get lost in this echo chamber of like, you know, seeing, you know, oil spills and for deforestation and all this waste from the fashion industry and supply chains collapsing. And it becomes very depressing. And so to be able to find something beautiful and uplifting in something so horrible um, 
is uh is um is nice i don't know what else to say it's really <laughs> nice i don't know it's just like inspiring i guess it's nice <laughs> that's the wrong thing to say but you know what I mean it's like yeah. how it's amazing that that everybody can come together in such a beautiful way yeah so those are things answering and also one, one last thing my oh, mother sure. you know I just I just can't tell you how much I love Sharon moms are amazing Nicole you're a mom <laughs> I'm a mom we need moms moms are amazing people and I just I just I love my mom she inspires me every single day so I things. love that you're so close with your mom. I hope that I have that type of closeness with my, I have two boys. Uh, they're yeah. still little, but I hope to have, you know, a, a close relationship with them. Um, mm. It's an, it's inspiring they're, to see, cause I, I see how much you love your mom and, and how close you love are. It. So great. <laughs> oh, thank you. Mom, mom, you know, when there's, when all else fails, I'm like literally on the phone with my mom all the time. You know, I, it's just like, I just, yeah, I'm super lucky. I'm super lucky. So, yeah. and you're an amazing mom too. So, oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, you know, in this time of echo anxiety or just life and you know state of the world anxiety, how do you stay optimistic? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. Um, I have no effing clue, Nicole. I don't know. I don't know if I was born this way. I don't know why, but I just don't really feel like for me, there's, there's no, there's no other option because I just, I'm so fortunate. I'm so privileged. I'm so, I have so many, so much access to so much of whatever it is that I might need. There's absolutely no way, no reason in heck that I should be, um, that I have anything to complain about. And so there are, of course, little things that get annoying. There are little, there are times when I'm crying. There are times when I'm having a hard time and wishing like, why can't this just work? But then I think about, I pull back and I think about the big picture. And I think, you know what, Patrick, you're pretty damn lucky. You have incredible people around you who support you. You've got incredible people around you that love you, that, who want to see you succeed, who want to see your business succeed, who want to see people that you involve in your business succeed or people involved in the things that you're doing succeeding. So that's what keeps me happy. And it's quite simple, I guess. It's quite simple because like, <clears throat> if you, I feel like if you don't understand and appreciate the light when the darkness is coming, then, and you don't stay focus on that then you're just going to get swallowed up by the negativity so i i wouldn't say anything else except for this is the only way that i know how to be i don't know i don't know any other i don't know any other way and some people might look at me and say that guy's an idiot <laughs> <laughs> some people might look at me and go that guy really needs to think twice or whatever the deal is but you know it's what gets me up every single day and there's and to be and especially being an entrepreneur, like, you know, you and I are, and it's not, an, it's not an easy thing. Entrepreneurship, first of all, in and of itself, is just like highs and lows, highs and lows. Like there's 20, like I said, one of, we were joking at the very beginning about one of, one of my many existential crises, but that's actually reality. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's actually a reality. And in some ways I'm kind of addicted to it. I love it because I love seeing how much farther we can push the envelope and seeing how much more that we can do. And also, and like I said, in ways I'm very, like I'm lucky and I, and I am so privileged to be able to, to do this because I'm just one person. I'm single. My footprint is like this. I don't really own anything. I don't own a house. I don't own a car. All I own really is like my grandmother's couch and a bed and some clothing. And that's really all I own, except owning the owning that I want to make a positive change. So the optimism comes from the fact that I will my day, my life down to pretty much a footprint like this, small, tiny, so that I can move and respond and, and, and grow as much as possible as I need to as quickly as possible and, and pivot if I need to. So that's, I think what keeps me optimistic. I love it. Amazing. So before we go, anything else you want to add or tell us about anything? Yeah. Well, I guess I just wanted to ask you, I wanted to ask you, what's your vision for the future? What's your, what is, what is your vision for 
how we're going to move this forward. I know I'm curious, I'm sorry to change the table, turn the tables around you, <laughs> on you, but being a mom, having these two beautiful boys and having a family, having an incredible husband, having this, like, what is, what is the vision for you for the future? How are we going to, and how are, how do you want to get there? I guess that's something that I want to know. Sure. Well, you know, it, it has not been easy. I mean, being an entrepreneur is not easy in general. And then deciding to start a business, you know, when I started Slot Society, um, I had a three month old and a three year old. So um, kind of a really weird time to, to start doing something. But I was so inspired by the concept. Um, and so for me, that was really where I just felt like, okay, I'm just, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this now. And I'm just going to see how it goes. And so, you know, for me, um, in, in terms of just, you know, the, the swap economy and all of that, uh, you know, obviously I'd love to continue to grow our online community of swappers and, you know, be able to reach more and more people. You know, we're only in the United States right now. There are people that I've talked with that have reached out that are interested in having this platform in other countries. Um, but an, from an execution standpoint, that's not as simple as just saying, oh, great, you want to do this. Perfect. Let's make it happen. So mm -hmm. uh, it's something that's on my radar that I, that I would love to see happen. And I also... I don't know if you were familiar with the Switching Gear Enabling Network, but we were a part of that, and it was a partnership between uh, Fashion for Good and Circle Economy. And one thing that came out of being a part of that group for me was realizing that, you know, we created this alt currency so uh, that we call Swapcoin. And it gives multidimensional value to secondhand garments. So it's not just a one-to-one -one swap. It's not just, oh, it's this brand. So it's this, you know, this value. It's like, oh, what's the condition at, you know, with a, a variety of different levels of condition, what's the season, you know, in addition to all of those other factors. Right. And so that's really um, kind of our secret sauce, so to speak. But being in SGEN made me realize that this is some, you know, that technology that we created is something that brands or companies that want to do their own take back programs could also utilize because we realized uh, through being a part of that group that there were some, some companies doing pilots and that were testing out take backs and having a hard time figuring out how do I value these items or how what do we give the consumer in exchange for, you know, when we take back the garment, what do they get? And, and so that's something that I would really love to focus on this year as well, because I see a lot of opportunity and potential there because, and as we kind of talked about, you know, it, we're not in a silo, right? Like what we're doing has the most potential when we, collaborate with other people and so I think that that's really where I where I want to kind of see things heading and focus in this year but it it's interesting because you know the pandemic was really not what any of us were expecting it threw threw me for a loop uh, personally <laughs> and professionally so my kids did not go to school for 18 months and so that was really challenging. Um, and so I think for me, now that things seem to be hopefully, you know, getting back to normal, that I can that I can focus on not just maintaining the business as it is, but continuing to grow, focusing on expansion, not just with the existing platform, but with ways that we can use the technology that we've developed to help other people and just help to make swapping and secondhand, you know, a little bit easier. Um, I love because, that. Yeah. So, I mean, there's plenty of resale out there, right? Uh, I'm, I'm a little partial to swapping. I know that you are as well, uh, <laughs> you know, um, and just continuing to kind of think through solutions and how we can use technology and harness technology to foster a more circular economy. Yeah. 
Oh, that's amazing. And so <laughs> inspiring. And you've come such a long way. It's been, I remember, very, remember many conversations very early days with what the heck is this? How is this going to work? And you've just done so such amazing work, you and your husband and your entire team. I'm so proud of you. Thank you so much. And likewise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you. That's well, it. Well, we could talk forever. And I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but before we go, um, so tell us, how can people find you and Global Fashion Exchange? How can people get involved with the work that you're doing? Yeah, very simple. Um, so, and if people want to team up with us together, that could be really fun too. So if they wanted to do a swap society, global fashion exchange swap together, that would be great. They can find me on um, Instagram or LinkedIn. So it's just Mr. Patrick Duffy on Instagram and then also global fashion exchange on Instagram. Um, and we have a set of, um, we have like a swapping toolkit that we can send if people want to actually do swap events. Um, and we have a, a very, you know, various other projects that we're doing. So it's very simple. They can just connect with us there. Um, and it's just even me personally is Patrick at global fashion exchange dot org. That's it. Amazing. Well, thank yeah. you so much. Thank for you. Thank us. you. Thank you. I really hope we get to do a swap together soon. Yes. Yes. We must. We'll figure it out. We'll make it happen. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> thank you. So All right. Much. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the Swap Society podcast. Swap Society is an online clothing swap for women and kids that makes it easy and affordable to mix up your wardrobe sustainably. We're a growing community of women across the USA who are creating positive change by swapping our clothes and slowing down our fashion consumption. We would love to swap with you. If you're interested in joining, you can sign up at our website. Learn more at www.swapsociety.co. That's swapsociety.co. You can find the show notes for each episode on our website. Please get in touch with us on social media too. We're on Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and YouTube for the video version of this podcast at Swap Society. Music is by Joel Korlitz and yours truly. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Please help us spread the word by subscribing, leaving a rating and review, sharing on social media, or simply telling a friend. We really appreciate your support. Have a wonderful day, and remember to swap before you shop.